Well, can I just say a very good morning to you all? Welcome to St. John's Church. I'll just move that. Is that a bit louder? You can hear me better now. Welcome to St. John's on this very, very special day. And it's wonderful to have so many young people. Thank you for coming on this important occasion. Uh, the service will run itself. There are some people who have got hymn books. I will announce the numbers when we come to them. But all the words will be on the screen behind me and on the two TVs at the side. Uh, there is a collection plate at the door if you missed it. Although we will receive the collection, we'll put it back there because uh, people, we're not passing the plate around at the moment. So if you want to leave something for the, uh, the British Legion, it will be at the back just over there. Uh, just a couple of notices for those in the um, church family. Uh, you know that Derek Folkard passed away recently. His funeral is going to be on the 30th of November. Uh, there will be a private cremation and then the main service will be here at 11.30. And just also to know, this is probably for the whole community, we've last got our defibrillator installed and up and running uh, this week in the porch. And the porch will always be left open. So if anyone is ever up this way needing a defibrillator, and I hope you don't, you know where one is. Well, let's just take a moment of silence and then we will sing. So, Father, draw close to us now for this special service of remembrance. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to stand and sing our first song of praise. It's 498. I think if you've got a hymn book and the words are on the screen. Please do sit down. So why are we in church this morning? We have come here today, firstly, to worship Almighty God. Secondly, to offer him praise and thanks for our nation's deliverance in time of war. Thirdly, to remember, for the, to remember those who have died or been injured or bereaved through war. And finally, we are here to pray to pray for forgiveness for our failure to live at peace with others, and to pray for strength to overcome evil and injustice wherever it is found. We're going to bring up some words from the Bible on the screen. This comes from uh, James chapter 4. What causes fights and quarrels among you? 
Don't they come from your desires, that battle within you? You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, if we're honest, we get so many things wrong. So it's good to come before God and say sorry and seek his forgiveness. So as we realize our failure to live God's ways, let us confess all we do that is wrong and our failure to pray for and establish peace in our world. And we pray together. God of peace, forgive us when we have been part of those things which turn people against each other for fueling anger and harboring vengeance, for not heeding your call to love one another. Inspire us never to give up on the hope that your death and risen life offer us. Give us the courage to pray and work for the peace you have promised to establish. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised to forgive all who turn to him from sin, All who trust in his son Jesus, grant us pardon for our sins, peace in our hearts, strength in his service, and everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to sing our next song of praise, which is based on Psalm 23. It's called, The Lord's My Shepherd, and the words are on the screen. Shall we stand? Please do sit down, and the scouts are now going to come and read a special poem written by Pam Milliard, who's with us this morning. It's called Red Are the Poppies. So, uh, Red are the Poppies by Pam, Pam Milliard. Red are the poppies, as red as blood, that were shed by many on Flanders fields. Then too soon, they came once more, the world engulfed in crippling war. War in Korea, war in Iraq, the Falklands War and Afghanistan, the shedding of blood for the freedom of man. Red are the poppies, as red as blood, in the fighting won and the fighting lost. 
the price of our freedom to live in peace of the men and women who paid the cost. Red are the poppies, as red as fear, that haunts the mind for year after year. Terror that man can afflict upon man, the torture, the horror, the evil plan. Red are the poppies, as red as the pain of the wounded soldier again and again. The limbs that are gone, the body maim. Red are the poppies, as red as the grief, for our sailors drowned brief the wave. Grief for our airmen who never came back, for the fine young men in an unmarked grave. Oh, red are the poppies, as red as blood, that was shed for all of us by the Son of God. Forgive us, Lord, for the blood we shed, blood like poppies, oh, so red. And our next song of praise is Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Let's stand. And we have a reading by the Cubs. It's from James chapter 3. This is a reading from James 3, verses 13 to 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done it, the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbour bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual of the devil. For there you have envy and selfish ambition, ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace loving considerate submissive full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness Thank you, Cubs, for reading so nicely to us from the Bible. We've now got a short video that's just going to remind us of why we're gathered here today.
shall we stand and together we're going to say the prayer that Jesus taught us. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, please sit down, and Linda's going to come and lead us in some more prayers. On this Remembrance Sunday, let us bring before the God of peace our prayers for the world, the church, and all his people. Merciful God, we pray for peace in our hearts and homes, in our nations, and in our world, the peace which is your will, the peace which we so badly need. We remember today, O Lord, all those who have died in any kind of war throughout your world, soldiers who have perished in the horror of battle, Innocent people hurt in bomb attacks. Men, women, and children attacked in their villages. Today, we remember especially those victims of the two world wars, including those close to us or to our parents and grandparents. We remember those who came home with terrible injuries, both physical and psychological, and those whose loved ones never returned. Lord, hear our prayer. Remembering the conflicts of the past and the sacrifices which were made, we pray for our world where, sadly, war still goes on. Lord, as we remember those who have lost their lives, help us to renew our fight against cruelty and injustice, against prejudice, tyranny and oppression. We pray for an end to war and violence in Ukraine, Myanmar, Yemen and other countries. We pray for the truce to hold in Ethiopia and for countries like Afghanistan and Syria, still affected by violence. Lord, you said, blessed are the peacemakers. We cry out to you in the darkness of our divided world and pray for that multitude in every country who do not want war and are ready to walk the path of peace. May they they voice be heard and may they not lose heart. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the leaders of the nation at this time, asking you to pour out your spirit of reconciliation on them. Give them a longing to bring freedom from fear and freedom from want for all people. Give strength and courage to those who bear heavy responsibilities for the peace of the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We pray for the church, called to witness to your love in this generation. May Christians work with all people of goodwill to break down the barriers which divide people. May those who profess one faith respect those who sincerely hold another faith and build a community where there is harmony and understanding. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all who face difficulties in their personal lives, problems in their families, in their friendships, in their neighborhoods or their workplace. Help them to be calm in times of uncertainty and patient with those around them. Show us when we can help and give support to others around us. On this day of remembrance, our hearts and prayers go out to all who mourn the loss of those we have loved. Give strength to them and help them to know your love and comfort. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, finally a prayer for ourselves that we may all put our confidence in you. O Lord, you know we are often filled with fear and foreboding. Give us courage and deepen our trust. You are a rock which nothing can shatter. On you we can place the whole weight of our lives. Lord, we bring our prayers to you in the name of your Son, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen.
Well, we've got a couple of minutes before we have uh, some silence, but who can just tell me? I'm going to look at the young ones, and who can tell me when the First World War started? You had your hand up quite quickly. 1914, very good. And someone over here, can you tell me how long it went on for? When did it finish? We're gone. 1918, that was a long war. Can you imagine all that time being at war? Yes, four years. And what about the Second World War? When did that start? Um, go on. Not quite. Quite. Do, do you remember? 1939. And when did that one finish? Go on. 1945. So what's that? Six years of war. So that's a lot of war, wasn't it? And so many people, you can see all their names listed there in the middle and on the far side from Elmswell lost their lives. But all the other names listed are the people who went off to fight. So it's very, very important that we're here today remembering all those people who went off to fight and so many actually died in battle. Any war still? Have we finished with war? Does it still go on? Where's there a war going on now that's always on the news? Ukraine, yes. And other wars? Is that the only place where there's a war? Go on, do you know another? Afghanistan, yeah, I mean, that's still going uh, on, isn't it? Lots of uh, people still being killed there. Syria, that's going on as well, isn't it? And there's Yemen, there's all sorts of places. And we're here, not just remember those who have fallen, but to pray for peace. This is a promise that's made in the Bible, that one day there will be peace. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised up above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The Lord will go out from Zion the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and he will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. So come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. So we want to see an end to war, and that is a promise that one day that will happen. But it's almost 11 o'clock, so if we're, going to, we're going to stand now and observe two minutes of silence after the music. Shall we stand?
They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will, we will remember, remember them. them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. God save our gracious King, long live our noble King, God save the King. Send him victorious, happy And we sing, Eternal Father, strong to save. Please do sit down, and we've got another Bible reading, and the Brownies are going to come and read this to us. John, chapter, fi chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. Jesus said, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay his dream, lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. This is my command. Love each other. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Sorry about the um, slight difference on the screen. Well, let me say a word of prayer. Father, as we think about today and about that Bible reading, please speak to us now. Amen. Well, if you're a regular here at St. John's at some of our all-age services, you'll know that I sometimes have a little creature that sort of uh, lurks about in a bag. Let me just see if he's around somewhere. Milo, you know, don't you? Let's see if I can find. Oh, yep, there's a bag here. Now, shall we see who is at, if someone's at home today? There's a little nose. And an eye's appearing. He's having a good look now. And he comes. Yes, it's the Remembrance Day service. And Rupert wants to start. This is Rupert, the dog. He says hello. Rupert, the dog, wants to start by saying, well done to all the young people today. You've been brilliantly behaved on such an important occasion. So well done. But he now tells me he's got some stuff in his bag to help us uh, go through what we're thinking about today. Okay, would anyone like to look in Rupert's bag? Milo, your hand went up so quick. Let's just see if you can find something. That's a bit odd, isn't it? I think you better put, just pop that down here. I'll get a table to put these on. Can I help me carry this, Rupert? Don't break your teeth, Rupert. There we go. There we go. So we'll put that, whatever that is. We'll have to see what that is in a minute. We'll see that in a minute. Okay, you've got another object. Somebody, oh, wow. Let's go over here because you had your hand up very quickly. Do you want to see what Rupert's got in his bag there? What else? Oh, right. We all know what that is, don't we? What's that? It's a poppy. You thought we would have that in there today, didn't we? So thank you, Rupert. We'll put the poppy over here. Now, there's more objects. You grab your hand up quick. Have a little rummage around there and see if you can find anything else. Oh, what's that? That's a cross. So there we go. We put the cross in the middle as well. Two more objects. Go on, have a look in there. Got to open that up. It's another cross. A picture of it. It looks like it's been scanned in from the other one. So let's put that here. And, oh, there's one more, and it's very, very small. So I can't come into the middle easily. So if you can, you can reach out there and have a look. I think there's something just right the way down here. See if you can... There you go, that. I don't know what that's doing in there. You've probably had a cold. There we, oh, what's that? It's an aeroplane. So that's that. That's very, very small, isn't it? Why have you got an aeroplane there, Rupert? Yes, I, yes. Oh, you, I know, do I? I'm going to speak about that. So let's just hold up that. It's got a little aeroplane in there as well. Right, Rupert wants to go and have a little nap now, so he's going to say goodbye and go back into his bag. But thank you, Rupert, for letting us see all those. So why has Rupert got all these objects? Let's look at this first one. What do you think? Any ideas what this is? What do you think? A ball, do you think? Should we have a look? See if I've got enough breath to do this. This might have been a mistake. See, when I had a curate here, I could uh, give this to him. Somebody said it. A heart. Why do you think? Why do you think he put a heart in there? What does a heart normally make us think of? What's that? Yes, we think, remember the loved ones that. Yeah, we remember the loved ones we lost. So this talks about love. What norm do you think of though when you see a heart? What type of love? The love in the heart. But who does it normally go to? Come on, it's a bit sort of asking young people this. Basically, I said, guess what? I'm like, have you got a girlfriend? Was that too? Is a bit too embarrassing. You have the little nod there. 
Yes, that's good. A heart normally makes us think of the love we have to somebody well, that we fall in love with, romantic love. And it's a really, really nice love. But it makes sure you go a bit funny. Your heart starts going boom, de, boom, de, boom, 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 fast every time you see your loved one. Sometimes you get home and you can't eat your dinner because you can't stop thinking about them. That is romantic love. And it's a very, very special, special type of love. I love doing weddings here. But um, Jesus, though, talks about a greater kind of love. A love even greater. And he says these words. These are words Jesus spoke to his friends the night before he died. In our Bible reading, we heard them. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. When I first met the lady, who's now my wife, I felt romantic love. I still do. Quick, but I'll be quick to say that. But it made me feel so good. It made me feel happy. And I was on cloud nine. But the greater love that Jesus is speaking about does not always make you feel happy because it might cost you something. Because Jesus says, greater love has this. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Now, Christians love Jesus very much because he showed his greater love to us. Well, how did Jesus show his love to us? What did Jesus do for us? Anyone? Maybe if I come here. What did, what did, uh, I haven't asked you guys yet. What did Jesus do for us? How did he show how much he loved us? He died. And that brings us to... Because Jesus died on a cross. And this is a little prayer cross that I've had. And it was absolutely perfect until... Friday, when I left it out thinking I'll use it for this talk, and my dog came and has gnawed it at the bottom. And then I thought, do you know what? That's probably a good thing, because the cross isn't something nice and smooth. It was a horrible thing. Jesus was put to death on a cross, and it was probably horrible. They'd made holes in his hands and into the cross, and into his feet, into the cross. So maybe my dog putting some holes in the cross is a good thing. But on the cross, Jesus shows how much he loves us. He died for us. The most famous verse in the Bible is John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. The cross tells us that, you see, some people think that Jesus dying on the cross was a big mistake. But no, Jesus died deliberately saying, I'm dying in your place for all the wrong things that you do so that you don't have to perish when it comes to the end of your life. You can be with him forever in new life. So Jesus died in our place so we could have eternal life. There can be no greater sacrifice than that. But what else was in Rupert's bag? Do you remember this one? Why have I got a copy of the cross, do you think? Any ideas? Go on. Jesus died. Jesus died on the cross. Why have we got this? A copy. We remember where he died. That's very good. But let me go back to those words I've been saying. Jesus said, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. So Jesus says, love each other as I have loved you. And this copy reminds us that just as Jesus was prepared to go the extra mile for his friends out of love, sacrificial love, we must copy him. We must copy him and do the same. That is what we're called to do. And this brings me to the aeroplane. You might wonder, why on earth was an aeroplane there? Maybe Rupert just found it and decided to put it in his bag. Well, I'm going to tell another true story. We've heard the true story of Jesus. I'm going to read another true story from this little book. So listen in. On the 13th of January, 1982, millions of television viewers watched as a bolding, middle-aged man 
swam in the icy cold water of a river in Washington, D.C. in America. Seven inches of snow had fallen that day, and the water was so cold that the life expectancy of anyone in it was no more than a few minutes. A helicopter quickly reached the scene and let down a rope to haul the man to safety. The viewers at home were amazed as the man grabbed hold of the rope and then quite deliberately let it go. Each time the rope was lowered to him, he had a chance of survival, but he chose to let it go. And in front of millions of mesmerized viewers, the man eventually died. It seems like a futile and pointless death, but we need to see the bigger picture because what had happened is an aeroplane carrying loads of passengers, had just crashed into that icy river. The survivors struggled in the freezing river amid ice chunks, debris, luggage, seat cushions and jet fuel. And then the rescue helicopter arrived, life vests were dropped, then a flotation ball. And the television cameras picked out that bolding, middle-aged man. What was he doing? He was grabbing hold of the rope and passing it on to others. He was a strong swimmer, and so twice he took the rope, gave it to someone else so that they could live. And then the man eventually drowned. So when we have all the details in front of us, it shows that that death was not futile. It was not needless. What was that man doing? He was following the example of Jesus. And that's what we're called to do. Today, of course, we've got poppies. I've got mine here. But the poppy reminds us of all those brave men and women who went off to war. They didn't want to go off and die, but some of them knew that they wouldn't come back. But they still went and made that great sacrifice That is a sacrifice of the greater love that Jesus talks about. You don't want to go and suffer, but they went for you and me so that we could continue to have peace and freedom. Those are the people we're remembering today, dying so others could live, just as Jesus died so that we could live. So Rupert showed us the heart Romantic love, it's lovely, but there's a greater, greater type of love than that. The love that he showed us by dying on the cross. And if we trust in Jesus and his death on the cross, we don't have to die, but have eternal life. But he says, copy my example. Just as the man in that icy river from the aeroplane followed the example. And today we're remembering all those brave men and women who did that. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. Well, let me pray. So, Father, we do remember those today. We honor them. But we also ask that we might follow their example, that we might follow the example of Jesus who died for us so that we might have life. Help us to trust in him and be prepared to give ourselves for other people. Amen. So we're going to uh, all stand now and do the act of commitment. And the words will appear on the screen. So uh, please respond in the when it comes up in bold. So what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. So let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? Will you work for a just future for humanity? Merciful God, we offer ourselves to you. Send us out to be beacons of peace in a dark world of conflict. Make us instruments of peace for whoever we meet and wherever we go. In the name of the Prince of Peace, 
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to come in a moment to our last song of praise. There will be a tea and coffee and other things served, so you don't have to uh, rush off. But we're going to sing our final hymn, In Christ Alone. Lord, we thank you for all that's been collected this morning, and we do pray that you will take it and use it for your good purposes. Amen. So Jesus said the words, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen.